Welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine Today, where we are joined by Alexei Melnik, an expert at the Razumkov Center. Alexei, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So on the 19th of October, we saw NATO conduct some of the biggest drills in decades. Can you tell us, what message are they trying to send to Russia through these drills? Uh, first of all, I, I should mention that uh, NATO has increased the uh, number of exercises per year, and three times probably at least, and also the scale of the exercise and the locations of the exercise, in addition to the deployment of NATO troops on the Eastern European countries. And I think that one of the main purposes, not just to improve uh, the skills of the military, but also, as you rightly mentioned, to send very strong and loud message to the Russians that NATO is still needed, NATO is still capable to do the job the, this organization was created for. And what is NATO's place in Ukraine's war with combined Russian separatist forces? Well, uh, Ukraine is a, a partner country. Uh, and unlike uh, being a member, uh, partner status has uh, some uh, very strong limits. Ukraine enjoys... Uh, a lot of benefits from NATO-Ukraine cooperation. Also, by the way, Ukraine is a contributor to the Euro-Atlantic security. Uh, but at the same time, Ukraine cannot enjoy the full membership status, in particular Article 5, which provides uh, collective security guarantees for NATO members. Okay. On the 16th of October, a meeting of Ukraine... Um a NATO-Ukraine joint working group on, on defence reform was held in Brussels. What can NATO, uh, what can Ukraine, sorry, expect to achieve from these meetings? Well, it's a regular meeting of uh, the group, which uh, I think uh, has been active for already almost 10 years, mm -hmm. joint working group on defence reform. And it has broader area than simply defence reform. It's also uh, some anti-corruption uh, activities. And uh, the, the main purpose of this group is to get together the experts, officials from Ukraine and from NATO countries. Uh, sometimes also independent, non-governmental experts are invited to take part in this group. And they basically provide advice, consultancy. They, uh, it's a, actually, it's a discussion club, but it's also a very practical discussion club. So you said this has been going on for more than 10 years? Yes, that's right. Has this changed, the, the discussions which they have, or how have they changed over the past 18 months? Well, de definitely uh, the ongoing conflict, Russian-Ukrainian conflict, uh, has influenced to the huge extent, uh, and uh, also it added uh, more practical things, because before that it was like uh, very general topics discussed like you know in every security strategy about you know all these threats that you, you could find in in any national security strategy but now it's it's very practical uh, ukraine made a list of uh, its uh, needs request and uh, nato nations not not nato as an organization as such but mostly nato nations uh, can choose from this list and uh, offer their assistance in the area where they have uh, the most valuable expertise. OK. Let's talk about the conflict in Ukraine. We have seen a, a recent lull in fighting. Can we expect this to continue? Well, uh, according to my, my estimates and probably most of the experts in Ukraine as well as abroad, uh, see that uh, probably next uh, from two to five months we may expect uh, kind of this uh, ceasefire with some positive movements like withdrawal of weapons exchange of prisoners but i'm afraid that this conflict is not over and especially because uh, the key from the escalation or de-escalation is still in one hands of mr putin and whenever he deems necessary to escalate this conflict again, he will just simply send weapons, money and so-called volunteers, you know, to, to start this conflict again. But uh, again, for uh, probably a few months, we may expect the relative ceasefire. OK, so is the, the reason for these few months of quiet, is this due to the weather or is this maybe that the Kremlin wants to see sanctions lifted or, or what is the reason for this? 
Well, let's uh, first of all let me mention that it suddenly stopped at the end of summer, mm -hmm. and now we understand why. First of all, Mr. Putin wanted to present himself at the General Assembly as a peacemaker. He wanted to uh, deploy his uh, friends in Western Europe uh, for the efforts to release sanctions, and also, as we know that the Syria campaign was planned already. So it's a combination of factors that now it's in the Russian advantage to show the world that this conflict is over, Russia is not interested anymore, but it, it's not true. But again, it's a combination of factors that made, uh, let's say, uh, or forced Mr. Putin to make this decision. Some experts and others, journalists, etc., have claimed that, that Putin has lost interest in Ukraine, but you would say that is not true. No, no, he hasn't lost. And actually, he, he, achieved, he achieved to some extent his objectives in Ukraine. He created the frozen conflict, and also it's under his control, which, I, as I said, he could activate or deactivate at any time he, deems, he considers necessary. And uh, also, uh, he um, actually he undermined to huge extents the, the possibilities of creating uh, an alternative model of development in Ukraine. Now he can present to his public, do you want something like this in, in your country? I mean, it, it's it, particularly, practically he, he achieved uh, some of his objectives, but not fully, as it was planned to create Novorossiya, like cutting off... Uh, eight oblasts of Ukraine from the rest of the territory. So the Novorossiya project, which would have seen the self-proclaimed Transnistria in Moldova, which have ran all the way across the coastline of Ukraine to the Russian border, is this something Putin will stop pushing for for the time being? Uh, it was an initial scenario back in March last year, so-called uh, uh, Russian Spring or Novorossiya, but it failed. Uh, again, due to many factors, first of all, because Ukraine uh, was able to uh, resist Russian aggression because of the uh, huge international support side of Ukraine. But now you mentioned Transnistria, for instance, and this, this conflict uh, in Donbass is absolutely different from what we see in other places like Transnistria or Nagorno-Karabakh, because unlike the other frozen conflicts, the, this area has 400 kilometers or more than 400 kilometers border with Russia, which is not controlled by Ukraine. Mm. So, would you say that Russians' actions in Syria are an attempt to distract and dismay and, and maybe pull people's attention away from what is happening in Ukraine? Uh, yeah, this, this is one of the objectives uh, to show the internal public. Because uh, Russian society wants, uh, is, uh, they are like uh, drug addicted. They they need more and more and more. And uh, last few months, there was nothing to present to the Russian public as great victories in Donbas. And uh, there are many many, uh, you know, no, uh, big noise about you know betraying uh, the idea of Novorossiya and uh, Russians want uh, some more victories. And now if you watch Russian television, there is a continuous story about these uh, nice Russian pilots bombing and destroying targets. Uh, and I think that they, they is easy to, to buy in. I mean, th this is something that w what, what they want on a daily basis. And uh, the Ukrainian issue now is uh, out of interest. That, that's probably, as I said, one of the objectives to attract the internal public of Russia by other success stories. But would you say one of the other objectives is to move the, the watchful eye of NATO away from Ukraine and to Syria? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about these geopolitical, let's say, uh, combinations, uh, because it seems that... Uh, Russia, actually, the Kremlin doesn't have a clear strategy. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, now if you watch the international television, th there are no news about Ukraine. And most of the news about, if it's related to Russia, about uh, their war on Syria. And uh, what uh, another objective that uh, Mr. Putin is trying to achieve is uh, to 
uh, persuade uh, the West that Russia can be a partner, that no problems uh, in the world, including the Middle East, can be solved without Russia. And uh, he's playing quite successfully, uh, we should admit. Alexei, that is all we have time for. Thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you for inviting again. Not at all. You have been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine today, where we have been joined by Alexei Melnik, an advisor at the Razumkov Centre. Thank you very much for watching.